Right, uh, we're back on this project here again now. Um, so we've got the high pressure pump to mount on it, and then we can mount it and everything. We're going to put it together slightly differently this time, because I'm hoping I'm running a CP3 um, high pressure pump, which basically isn't really going to fit on any of the standard brackets that bolt to these engines. Obviously they have tiny little common rail pumps on them from the factory. Uh, so we decided, well I decided I didn't really want to run it on the cam belt due to the fact that I'd have to extend the cam belt to actually sort of fit the pump in. And I didn't really want to do that. It's also a pain in the neck because every time you want to take the pump off you've got to sort of strip all the cam belt and all apart. Uh, so the plan is to try and run the cam belt sort of setup off an RHR so the slightly newer 16 valve engines, like what's fitted to the Ford and Volvo um, and the newer Peugeots, um, which actually run the high pressure pump on the side of the head. Um, I'm not planning on doing that, but I am planning on trying to use their cam belt setup. Um, so I've actually bought a RHR engine, um, basically from a scrap yard, which is shagged. Well, I say it's shagged, it's not actually, it just had injectors stuck in it, um, which we've actually managed to get out fairly easily with a slide hammer. Um, but that's got all the bits and pieces, because. I, well, I bought the cam belt kit, but it turns out there's basically everything is different between the two engines. Um, so I'm trying to piece together a way now to. So what I'm basically trying to do here is just uh, allow the cam belt to fit purely to run the camshaft. That's all the belt's going to do. But the problem with it is the RHR. Even though this is an RHW, um, so a slightly earlier like the Allier manif manifold sort of design, um, and all the bolt holes, although they look to be the same, nothing is actually the same, and none of it lines up. And what are you kicking at? <laughs> Someone's finding this funny. Um, so nothing's fitting, so I'm gonna have to modify all the sort of, well, tensioners, pulleys, all the rest of it to make it fit. Um, the first problem I got is because the belt is only going around the camshaft and the crank um, and not around the pump, the two halves of the belt in the middle get very close to each other. Um, and obviously the stop tensioner on the RHW is sort of fitted here, the offset one, and if you tension it up, um, the belts touch each other, which is not good. Um, so the RHR puts the tensioner up the top here, um, but obviously has all the fastenings and holes etc. put in the head, which we don't have on this head. Um, and I've looked, thought about it long and hard, and there's not really any, well the best way I've come is to actually try and retrofit that up here I think. I've looked at moving it down to the bottom, um, but that's going to give problems with the covers. So. It's looking like we're going to have to put a hole in here, which is a bit of a pain. Um, if I sort of realised before, I would have obviously done this before fitting the head to the engine. Uh, so we're going to have to do it in situ now, which isn't perfect, but I think with some with some care and a few of us watching the drill, um, we should be able to get it nice and square and get a decent um, get a decent hole in there and tap it out quite nicely. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Just a um, M8125. Um, obviously, if there's any disasters, it can be sort of oversized and heavy coiled. Um, sometimes it's almost actually stronger I think with a stainless thread in it but we'll try and start out at the right size um, there's no reason why it shouldn't be perfect the first time if we just go, go steady at it so we're going to bore a hole in there and then I'll sort of get the, pout, the belt and all mounted I'd like to get that belt on and timed up um, that can kind of be forgotten about then um, and then I can go on to actually mounting the CP3 which I'm going to have to make brackets for uh, which will be running off the uh, auxiliary belt um, so that's my basic plan so we will get the drill out and mark this up and see if we can make a hole. Right, so the way we're going to go about trying to do this, um, like I said before, this is not really the way this should be done. And that's a little bit, it's not really how I would like to be doing it. But now that I've gone this far and put it together, um, we're going to have to work with what we've got. Obviously, what you'd really want to do here is have this sort of in a mill or at least in the pillar drill somewhere where you've got it square and you can actually measure it um, and be absolutely sure you're coming in completely square with the drill. Um, but we haven't got that luxury here um, and I'm pretty confident with a bit of care we can come in square enough um, obviously the, the tensioner actually sits flush with the block so if we're just you know a few thou either side the bolt will obviously still pull in tight um, but we would like to be square as we possibly can be um, so I've marked the hole um, with the sharpie in there between so we're just going to put a centre punch on that hole now just to get it marked um, which should then enable us to drill in the right place um, now we're going to come in with the drill and keeping it square both ways, just come in the depth um, and then we'll go in with the tap. Right, um, so we'll start off with a tapered tap. Um, so this is M8 by 125. Uh, so we'll run that into it, bottoms out, and then we'll go back in with the bottoming tap afterwards. Uh, to thread it to the very bottom. Um, I think I'm actually going to use some threaded bar here 
rather than the original um, bolt that would have held it. Um, I just feel that's probably the better thing to do. I don't know, when you're going into aluminium and you're kind of talking it down and undoing it, it's something that probably will get undone for a few times for a minute. And I just don't like undoing bolts in aluminium all the time. I kind of prefer to put a stud in um, and sort of leave it where it's to and then worry about tightening it outside so you're not pulling on those threads all the time in the aluminium. Um, we've managed to get over an inch of, into the head there, so we've got a really good holding on it anyway. Um, but I think it would be a safer option. Obviously the disadvantage here and the reason they don't do that originally is because when it's in the car um, and you've got a stud in there like that, the tensioner won't come off the stud. Um, so obviously that's incredibly impractical generally, but I can assure you this engine will be coming out for a, um, any other reason apart from the tensioner being worn out because it just won't cover the miles. So it's not going to be a problem. Right, so I've ran a tap down through there now, uh, blown the hole back out again. Um, quite pleased with that actually, it's come out quite nicely. Um, so I just put the OEM bolt in there just to uh, show you that one. Um, and that'll wind right in. Well, quite a long way actually, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, so we've got a piece of M8 um, normal threaded bar there to go in there. Um, so I'll stick that in now and work out what length we need. Um, and then we also need to make a tab or something um, to hold the retainer. It's actually the, it's like a more modern springy style tensioner. So one of the ones with the indicators on them. Um, which I know isn't really necessary because I can just tension it like I would have on the original one anyway. But um, it seems as though we've got one, um, it'd be cool, cool to use it. So basically you just need to hold this piece here um, and then what happens is when you get the belt at the right tension, the indicator lines up like that um, and that tells you where to lock it off, which is quite cool. Um, so I'm thinking we'll probably use this hole somehow um, to line. We may even be able to actually, thinking about it, we might be able to bend that over so when you fit it, um, it just drops in that hole. So we'll see what we can do there. And the uh, tension will go on there. Yep, yeah, that, and that'll be ideal. Um, so I just need to make the retainer now for that back plate. I need to work out where the cam belt cover goes there to make sure we can see it and it's not um, fouling the cover. Okay, right, um, so we're back at the side of the engine here now. Um, so you saw before we've mounted this um, extra idler or tensioner, should I say, uh, to the side of the cylinder head there. That's our option, obviously, to tension up the cam belt. Um, now, the next problem we've ran into is basically on the side of the, well, any, just about any Peugeot engine, really, so anyone who's familiar, um, you generally have your top engine mount, which bolts to this kind of area um, on, on the left-hand side of the engine stroke head, or head and block assembly. Um, and that normally then mounts up to the chassis somewhere on the sort of driver's side wing. Um, now, originally, um, well, on the last engine, I was actually using the factory um, block, which basically bolts to the, well, the head and the block uh, using four bolts, and then your engine mount comes in and bolts on top, um, which is fine because the cam belt used to go around the high pressure pump over here, etc., and then it was no problem at all. Uh, the problem I've obviously now got is because this belt here is now wanting to come down through here, um, obviously it's fouling the side of that block. Um, so that's not going to work anymore at all. Now, obviously the RHR um, Siemens managed version of these engines, the slightly more modern ones, um, they do run the cam belt in this same setup. Um, so I've got that RHR engine. Um, so I thought, excellent, we'll use the block off that one, um, which is what this is. Um, so you can see this one's got the slot here with this extra area. Um, the idea behind that being an extra idler sits in behind, um, then bolts onto the block, so you end up with an idler here, which just keeps the belt clear of that um, flange. Um, but as I suspected, um, and as is often the case, it doesn't bolt up. Um, the bolt holes you would think look very similar to the four on here, however they're not, they're all different. Um, the dowel size is different, these two holes don't line up. Um, so we're gonna have to do some work here to get this, to get this going. Um, so the first thing I've done is uh, milled out the top hole here. Um, it's not an ideal solution, um, but I'm thinking if I can get three good fasteners on the other ones, um, obviously it's still going to be a nice solid fix. Um, I have to cut the seat back a bit here and the bolt will still go and flush. So I basically just elongated that hole to make that one fit, um, which some would look at that as being a bit of a bodge. Um, but it should do the job and I don't... I, I'm not, I basically, I don't really want to be doing the head here because um, we've got a waterway and also the high pressure oil comes up through here. Um, the regulator is in behind here and then feeds up to the camshaft here. That's what these um, galleyways are. There's actually a pressure regulator spring loader thing in there. Um, so I don't really want to be messing with the head here. Um, so that's what I've done there. Now the next problem we've got is there's also a dowel 
um, that goes in the side of the head um, and into this larger hole. Now, I've actually just drilled this out. This is bigger than what it was originally. So I've just reamed that out to 13.7, um, which is the same size as the dowel on the RHW block. Um, so that obviously goes in there and gives you a nice flush fit. And obviously the dowel then goes into the side of the head as well. Um, it does, it screws itself in, but it's the main the important bit here is there's a good half inch of dowel in the head. Um, that gives you a lot more strength in that plate. And I have had problems with these going loose if you don't have these fitted. Uh, the problem being is the dowel off this engine, um, this is actually, I've cut this off, so there was a nut on the top of here. Um, it's, it's basically not long enough anymore um, to pass through the extra wide block. You'll see it's basically the same width, which doesn't allow for anything to go into the head, which should be like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do here now is uh, basically centre drill parallel with this stud down through the centre, uh, drill it and tap it. Um, this will then turn into a stud on the side of the cylinder head. So we'll just screw that one in there like that. We'll tighten it for a minute. Um, so obviously that will then sit on there, um, which you can see, is, well obviously it's moving sideways, but there's no axial play at all. Um, so that will then give me an extra fastener back there. Um, so you'll have one, two, three, four good, good, good fasteners. And this one here is only obviously a smaller thread from the factory anyway. Um, so that should give me a good fix on the side of the head with that and keep my cam belt clear. Um, and hopefully enable me to put the cam belt on um, somewhat as it was intended on the RHR. Um, this pulley is in a slightly different place, but it, sh it should do the same job. Um, so we're going to get this mounted in the drill now um, and start centre drilling that to take a to take a bolt to hold everything together. Uh, right, okay, so this is what we've come up with. Um, so we've driven and tapped the end um, for an M8125 again. Um, so that will then allow me to bolt up the extra bolt on that dowel, as well as obviously having the rigid rigidity of the dowel itself. Um, so we should have four decent fastenings and our extra pulley, um, and that should hopefully sort that area out. Um, the next problem is to try and work out some cam belt covers, because again, None of the factory ones are going to fit. Hopefully we can kind of use the RHR bottom one. Um, obviously we're missing bolt holes again, but we should be able to redrill and pick up some of these ones that we used on the RHW. Um, and I'm not too sure with the top one yet because that actually has a back plate on the RHR, which we definitely can't use. Um, but hopefully we can, we can make the top cover fit one way or another. Right, um, so that's got that mounted on there now. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, if the camera will focus. So we've got the four bolts holding that one on. Um, and obviously we've got the extra idler in there. Um, so that should do the job nicely. And uh, there you can see I've got the belt on, um, it all tightened up. So I'm pretty pleased with that. That's pretty much how that's gonna sit there now, hopefully. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. Um, we've got plenty of clearance on the belt with it in the, uh, we're in the fully tensioned position now, um, and we got, well, I can get my finger in there, so there's plenty of room there. Um, so I'll just nip up the uh, vernier nuts there now that I've tightened the belt, and um, that should be good to go for the cam timing.